Let's finish our example here that we were working on in the last video. The last step that we've got to do here is find the signs of our first derivative function in order to find out where our function is increasing and decreasing. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug our test point values into our derivative function and we're going to see what the sign is as a result. Now I like to plug my test point values in right here. You don't have to, you can plug them into the first derivative anywhere you want to. But I like plugging them in here, they're just easier to do. So <clears throat> negative, if I plug in x equal negative 2 here, that yields me, and I'll kind of come out here and show you how I do it, that first set of parentheses is going to give me a negative value. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. If I plug a negative 2 in here, negative 2 plus 1 is another negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So that tells me that over the entire domain of this function, and the domain of this function is negative infinity to positive infinity, that from negative infinity up to negative 1, my function is increasing. That's what it tells me. Now I'm going to plug in 0. If I plug in 0 for x back over here, I get a negative value. And if I plug in 0 for x, I get a positive value, and a negative times a positive is a negative. So I know from x equal negative 1 to x equal positive 2, my function is decreasing, all based on the sign of the first derivative. Now I'm going to plug in 3. 3 minus 2 is a positive 1. And again, I don't care what the value is, I'm just looking for the sign. And 3 plus 1 is a positive 4. So there, that tells me that over that interval, my function is increasing. So I would answer this by saying f of x, my function, is increasing on the two intervals from negative infinity up to negative 1, not including, we use parentheses, and from 2 to positive infinity. One mistake that some students make is they'll, for some reason, they'll pick up a test point instead of their points right here where their first derivative equaled zero. Those are our points where our monotonicity is going to change. The test points are just for us to test to see what the sign of the derivative function is. And f of x is decreasing on the interval between negative 1 and 2. So there, I've shown the AP Reader all of my work, every step in the process of finding the monotonicity of a function using the first derivative. I have found my first derivative, sorry, that was step number one, set it equal to zero, step number two, found the points where it equaled zero, step number three, set up my table, found my test points, and found the sign of my first derivative, and then actually answered my question. So there's several steps involved in this process, so I want to make sure that we can do those. So where is f of x, and here's a different function, increasing, and where is it decreasing? So let's do the same process. The first thing that I would expect to see a student do is find the first derivative function. And that is the one, let's see, the three pops down front, one third times three is one, so that just leaves me an x squared minus two x minus three. The next thing I would expect to see a student do is set it equal to zero and find the x values where that's a true statement, x, x, three, one, minus, plus, hopefully you can do that algebra fairly quickly. So x minus three equals zero, or x plus 1 equals 0, so x equals 3, or x equals negative 1. These have an A. These are called critical points. Critical points, and we will cover those more in depth later. But critical points are where your first derivative equals 0 or is undefined. And those are the only places in the plane where monotonicity can change. So that's why we're after critical points. Again, we give our little table. Please don't draw a real number line and do this on a real number line with pluses and minuses. 
and I'll explain uh, in some lessons later why we're not going to do that. Again, I have two critical points, so I'm drawing two lines out there. I'm going from the smallest critical point to the largest one. I'm going to go on either side of these real number values in the plane and pick up any test points, and then I'm going to plug those into my first derivative function. Again, I'm going back here. So when I plug negative 2 in here, I get a negative times a negative. So again, I get positive there. When I plug 0 in here, I get a negative times a positive, which gives me a negative. And when I plug 4 in here, that gives me a positive times a positive. So I can clearly tell the AP reader that f of x is increasing on, or I could say over, we can go over an interval or on an interval, from negative infinity to negative 1 and from 3 to positive infinity. Again, be very careful that you don't use your test points when you're finding your intervals. And decreasing on or over, either word you like, uh, the interval from negative 1 to 3. And I've done the work to back up my answer. It's not enough just to write that down. I have to back up my work. Several years ago, students used to do this, which is very intuitive, and you know, we would see things like this as an AP reader. The AP people that write the test will no longer let us do that. We have to actually give it in a different form, for instance, like a table here. And the reason why is because we might not always be dealing with just one function. We might have f, we might have g, we might have h. And so what you would find is you would find, you know, all of these, you know, 0, 1, and 5 with pluses and pluses and minuses and all that kind of stuff. And students would label which line went with which function. And so students were losing process points on these kinds of problems. And so they said, we clearly want to see which function you're working with. So that's why I want your work to look that way. So come to class next time, and we'll do some practice on finding where a function is increasing and decreasing.